All right, let's get into it. Chris in the building. Yeah. Long time coming. I mean, we we we've been uh we we've been chatting back and forth for a little bit now since uh since you saw the video of uh of the video is titled The Most Hated. And uh Oh my god. And you you had some uh you you had some you you had some intense thoughts on on that particular video. Um right. now let me ask you this. If 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 she wouldn't have done what she what she done and and hadn't uh came on social media to brag about it, then would you have a very different opinion about her? I know she had done it without, you know, social media. If I had known first like she had done it, no, nah, I would have changed her. I would have set the girl down and said, Hey, this is how it works. First of all, no snitching on any driver unless you kill somebody. Man, you do nothing wrong. He's not, you know, spying on her, calling her company. And that makes me wonder the way she talked that she was even a driver. Because she was so, she's very educated. I, I could tell that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, she's, know, what, I don't know what she was. She's a driver. She's uh, on on her uh, on her TikTok page. Uh, she uh-huh. she mentioned in a few videos that she done that she that she been driving for twenty plus years. I don't believe that. <laughs> Not in four minutes. I don't believe that. Uh-uh. No way. I got twenty four years. There ain't no damn way. <laughs> so I just don't. I just don't believe it. Did she say who she drove for? What she pulled was it like drive in reefer? Well, nah, she uh, she don't. Andy, I don't know. Well, she don't go into detail as as uh, as who she drive for or what she's pulling. Uh, I can't I, I, I can't tell that she drives a Mack truck. Uh, it's a it's a Mack truck. I'm not gonna say mm-hmm. what I'm not gonna say what color it is because you know a lot of people. Sure, right. You know right. a lot of, a lot of that's why that's another reason why I haven't mentioned her name directly because you know a lot of people came to me in my inbox came to me in my emails and all like that like what's her ad uh what's her name who she drives yeah see I got to do the, the Google search on mm-hmm. her face the, and see I went to school for forensics. Biometrics is awesome. Right. And you can do you can find out who's and I did. I found out a little bit, but I didn't find much about her driving. That's what gets me because what I did find out, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the investigative part of me, is uh uh-uh. there's just something wrong with the whole thing. I don't think she told anybody. I don't think she got the guy fired. I think she just wanted to be famous for a minute. What? She did it the wrong damn way. Well, you know what? Uh, th- you know, that was another question that came up too, you know, throughout the you know, throughout the whole thing. Is that uh-huh. how did they? How did she know he got fired? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, would a company exactly. right? Would a company actually tell her that? Yeah, he got terminated. You know what I'm saying? But still, uh, I think maybe the shut up. They might. They say, "Oh yeah, we terminated him. You're good." Right. Right. Now, I think that was one for the attention for something. She's after something. Hmm. I don't know what it is. I had to just I had to study her just a little bit to see what she really was doing and why, what the purpose was. Did she, if she's been out here that long, she ought to know she can't do something like that. That's one of the first things you learn as a driver. Uh-uh. You help one another, you don't take each other down. Exactly. That's what gets me. Exactly. Well, she... um. You know, she she did take the video that well, she made several videos afterwards. But on right. her on her page, you know, she took all of them down. I, I think, you know, number one, because of the backlash. Number two, right. you know, she's trying to clean up her image. And, you know, she's trying. I mean, you know, she garnered about maybe about Just seven. In herself is the best way to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she garnered about. Yeah. She garnered about seven thousand followers so far. Uh, so far, so mm-hmm. I guess that's I guess that's a good thing for. Yeah, and it is like I said that because she's very educated. The way she uses her words, mm-hmm. I, I listen to her talk. I listen to it over, and I listen to how she did that. And it's like she's teaching a third grade class. You know, the way she talks, and it's, it's like, and then she is like high on morals and all that. Okay, yeah, that's great to all have. But when you're a driver, sometimes 
you know, when people do things you don't like or you disagree with, you don't call the company. You don't snitch on. You don't tell that how bad of a person that is. I don't know. I mean, he might have been, you know, living out of that truck and not for the next week. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Maybe on vacation and he stayed in that truck. I mean, I know a lot of guys who really did live in their truck because they didn't have a home. That was their home. That's just crazy. I mean, nobody calls her company and says, hey, she's drinking spiced ice tea, you know. Might be bad for her. Good God. Well, hopefully ho- hopefully she learns, you know, learn. You, you live and learn. You live and learn. Mm-hmm. So hopefully she. Yeah, uh, she's been out here that long. She should have learned a long time ago. Uh-huh. She's just now learning. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> like three. Uh, that's what's up. Well, let's go ahead and start with your story, Chris. Um, okay. You you have uh, been rocking out here a little bit over twenty years yourself. What's uh? Twenty four. Uh, twenty four. Well, what's your um? Yeah. What's your trucking journey so far? Where where did you come from before you got into trucking? Um, I lived in Kansas, South Central Kansas. We farmed, and then we were also produced rodeos. So we had rodeo stock. I remember it was, I don't know, about 14. Daddy went to Ardmore, Oklahoma with the family, except for me and my brother. They all went there to a buck and bull sale. There was two trucks Daddy had just bought. It was a white Freightliner. That, I guess they was called white back then, and a pig. So Gary and I, we had to take him to town. First, Daddy marks the spot where we had those trucks, so that way he knew if we moved them. We didn't know how to drive a truck. had no idea. We took him to town, by golly, dragged me in one, come back and got the other one. That's how I did that. Only in my family ever drove a truck, somebody. But for me, it was like, I had to go. I had to move. I had to I had to go places. I had to do things. And because I had worked with cattle, you know, livestock, just animals in general, that's what I wanted to do. And so for about four months, I was with an ex-boyfriend who was very abusive, very abusive. We were coming over to Hatsby one night, and he hit me. I stood up. I grabbed the mic, hit him over the top of the head. I thought, you know, right up there, I'm going to kill this SOB. By the time we got to Barstow, he was like, I'm sorry, it never happened again. He went to the restroom after it fueled all that, and we had a load of cattle. It was winter. I took off, left him there. By the time I got to North Las Vegas, all his stuff was out the window. I got Colby, Kansas, and <laughs> was in cattle on the ice and snow. It was the first time I'd ever done that by myself, but I did it. And then on, I was by myself. I loved it. There was just nothing... I liked better. The dude only had one time to put his hands on you. That was it, huh? Well, actually, it was going on for about three months. It kept getting worse, and I was like, "This is not right. I don't like it." I was stuck. I was, I, had, I was in a corner. I didn't know what to do. But coming over to Hatchery, I decided right then that was it. Over with. And I beat him with the mic on that TV. On the okay, I'm sorry. That'll never happen again. Yeah, I've heard that too many times. When I got to Beaver, Utah. I went and got my bottom lip stitched up in nine stitches. When I got to Colby and unloaded. I wanted to know where he was. I said, I don't know, and I don't care. I said, we thought something like that was going on. I said, why in the hell didn't somebody step in? I had to step in for myself. It happens. It's terrible. It happens. It's never happened again, and it never will. Now, I, I am my own. I just can't handle something like that. That's what's up. Congratulations to you for, you know, being, you. You know I've never strong. seen the guy or spoke to him or know anything about him. I don't know whatever happened with him, and I don't care. You, 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 don't you care. shouldn't care. He's gone out your life next. So exactly. So talk to me, uh, uh, Chris. You, you're a cattle hauler, a, a female cattle right. hauler. So what's, what's the experience on that? Because I never, you know, I, I mean, I, 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 I talked to a male cattle hauler back in the day but how how is it for a female talk to me what, what's your you know what's your average load like like what, what's t- well, talk to me I from started, top to bottom when i started now i didn't hire load legal and i mean i didn't know nothing but i had the old timers which are the best guys ever to help me a lot they were hard on me there was days i'm like God, I hate this job. I was, should have been a secretary. By the time I got unloaded, I was ready to reload and go back again. You know, it, it, it depends on what you have. You have fats. You can only call. I think anywhere between 38 to 42. It depends on your trailer and all that. Um, calves. I like calves the best. I go into Bakersfield, just north of Bakersfield. I'd load infants. They would bottle feed them. They'd bed the trailer down and 
New Mexico, I went. Didn't stop till I got there. Out there, though, I took them out, bottle fed them, and they were the best. The best loads ever was the infants. I loved them. I'd go to a place, a set of pins to go load, and I'd look to find that one crazy one. The guy's all looking at me, bugged out, his ears out. Okay, that's one's going to give me problems. A lot of times I'd go somewhere to unload. It might be in the middle of the night, and I'm by myself. And <laughs> I had one. I loaded in Coral, Texas, and I took it to you, took that load to your valley. Sure enough, he came back up that ramp, and I was letting the last of the cattle off. And he hit me all the way till I got to the jail, which is the very tail of the trailer at the top. I got in there, shut that gate. I said, "Ha ha, MF, you've got you can't get me down." That gate popped back open, and here he came in that jail with me. Oh my god. He kept me in that trailer for about three hours before I finally got him to go down, drop that tail, and went out the side gate. I thought it was all over with. I had two broke ribs, but I didn't say nothing to nobody. I didn't say nothing. My boss knew something was wrong. Friday, I go park the truck. One of the guys said, got your horse ready. We're going to go rope. Okay, now, guys, I'm going to sit out this weekend. I'm telling nobody. Finally, my boss and his wife came by, <laughs> took me to the hospital, sure enough, I had two broke ribs. That's the only time I ever got hurt. Wow. Out of all those years. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, your, your cargo, you're in charge of live cattle. These, you have to be careful. You know, of course, a truck can't stop on a dime and turn and real fast and all that anyway. But with cattle, you really can't do that. I mean, you throw one, you throw them down, and then you got to stop and make sure they're not walking on one another because they can injure one or kill another one. Um, I'd go to California a lot, and I'd be on pen, and I'd have bulls, and they'd be fighting back there. So I'd kind of get in the middle line, make sure nobody's back behind me. I'd hit the Johnny break, knock them down for just a second. They'd, they'd get back up, you know. They were healthy enough. They'd get back up and they'd stop moving around. Yeah. I'd ask about 45 minutes and <laughs> they'd now, do it again. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, this is uh, like a, 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 a two-part question. So the first question right. that I always that I always wondered, like while while driving and being that this is livestock, you know, of course, they're moving around and they're shifting the weight a lot. So does that mm-hmm. does does the weight does does driving cattle is a little bit more is a little bit more different because they you know they're constantly moving. All right, you got it. You have to kind of counteract. I guess you could call it. That gets moving too much, and that trailer gets going back and forth. Gas on it. Keep that trailer under you. And people go, "Why? Oh, why you drive a hundred? Okay, you drive 100 with a cow like that. It's not something we like to do all the time, but it's something that has to be done. And it's how you correct the level. That's why always don't run team either. Most of them don't. You don't know if the person driving is as good as you because you think you're, you know, you're better. You know how to counteract it when something goes wrong. And that's kind of what you think. He might have been driving 50 years and I've been driving five. I, it's hard to sleep behind somebody like that. Um, you can. You eventually can. And I've had people who could behind me. I actually have the job that training some of these guys. Oh my God. But it, it, it is really, it's hard because they do, they get to move it around a lot. You got to know too, the movement is that, is that the normal movement or is there something going on back there? You pull off, you check it. They might be one down. You got, you got to get them up. Can't get in the trailer. Got to do it from the side. And I've had, I've had where they, we load in South Texas and head towards Kansas. By the time we get to about Abilene, they're like moving around on top of each other because they're cold. The, the change of weather makes a big difference for them, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some of the guys that do the fall and spring run that go way up north in the mountain. Mm-hmm. Uh, them guys, they got it going on. Them guys, can they can do that. And, and they're great at it. They look good doing it, too. Always look good. Okay. Now, my other question, uh, would, would, would you have to go through the, uh, would you have to go through the scale? Oh, yeah, we go through scales empty. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Supposed to go through the scales. Uh, I come out of Nebraska, I came back into Kansas, and I was empty. And this great off night, he was running with me, asking me questions, because you guys don't have to go through the scales, do you? I said, nah, not the men, you would do. Oh, yeah? What do you do? I said, we go around them. Well, the scale guy's listening on the radio while we're talking. He said, all right, Bohol, I heard that. I said, hey, I just heard that rumor. I just tell the kid. I'm like, oh, my God. Now, banning California, one of the worst places ever. I was 8,800 over gross, and I didn't even have a license yet. And I was driving, going out there, 
pulled me in. Crap. Take my paperwork in. Because we were 8,800 overdrive, something like that. I said, well, you know what? They put sawdust in the floors in there. I said, but in the cab's pee, it expands. It makes it heavier. She looks at that guy. The other guy goes, well, that sounds about right. She did my paperwork at me. She said, get it right next time. She let me go. I had never used that excuse again. I don't know how I did it. That was the first thing and the only thing I could think of. And she bought it. So did he. Oh, it didn't make a difference. Okay. It was crazy I did that. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so you uh, what what's uh, what what's the average day for you? You go pick up. What, what's it like to go pick it uh, pick up the uh, the cattle when when you go to like how how, Whenever, how how do you get your how do you get your load assignment like from there to where you actually go pick up the cattle? Okay, uh, for instance, in South Texas, Central Texas Cattle Company, it said it pins there. A lot of times we'd load and go out west, the Arizona or California. And we'd load, get straight through, and we made sure everything was right, and we'd get to the, you know, just for the port in New Mexico, make sure our paperwork's right, because um, we're going to get pulled in. We know that. By the time we hit Arizona to get permits, they're, they're closed. We, I passed that one. So, how was that? 18, 16 to 18 hours straight. Um, South Texas where we loaded to Raleigh and there was like six or seven of us that constantly ran together we come back sometimes reload. most of the time I reloaded in Phoenix and came back to San Angelo or to San Antonio um, sometimes loaded Rogan Steers brought them back to Abilene done that a few times uh, sometimes get crazy I mean cattle, bad looking cattle all over through Arizona you know, and so they were like wanted water and food, and I'd have two or three drops. But then, starting at Lubbock, and then I'd pay rocks and it to me or San Angelo. It just kind of when you drive for a small company like that, you you know your your boss tells you where you're going, what you're doing. They don't sell cattle in the south part, of south part of Texas at night. They tell you to head north. Where am where I going? They said head north. You don't know till the next morning. And then you're still driving. It might be 8 o'clock in the morning. They'll tell you where to take them. And the only reason why is calves ain't sold yet. And that's that's kind of neat. I didn't know that. They made me do that several times before I finally realized that's what was going on. Just loading ahead north. And it, it could be, you know, of course, I now don't have to log. No log works, no nothing. And on your paperwork, you know, you just, you just go. You just kind of go with it. You, the book that when when they tell you where you're going, um, that's because it's at, at like from South Texas to Raleigh, but from South Texas going north, it's usually calves that ain't sold yet. And then you know where you're going. Then you might go to Lubbock, somewhere in Amarillo. Might go into Kansas. You just don't know. Most of the time, I went to liberal Kansas with mine. Uh, it's kind of it's a cool job because you don't you're driving. You are driving a long time. Okay. It, it takes a special kind of person to be able to drive like that. Um, so you got you, you got to really. So you uh, say, so you say that you guys is not is is not uh, ELD compliant. Y'all y'all don't have to. You don't have to. Oh man. See the reason being on that. Think about this. Okay, when if if you have to pull over at you know and be done, whatever, and take your ten hour break. The government is going to have to come up with pins, and each time a load of cattle is unloaded and then reloaded, they got to sit clean these pins, disease, stop diseases and stuff like that, illnesses. And they're not going to do that. They just can't. Like I said, most cow haulers don't run team. You know, I mean, I know there are some that do, but most of them don't. And so you really, it's cost, it would cost too much to build pins and to clean them each time a load was, you know, in there and then reload it, they'd have to clean it for the next load. It's just, it's just not, nobody could make any money that way. You know, nobody could. It would be, prices would really, really be high if they had to do something like that. Wow. So, right, because of COVID, they're not even, we don't have to log either, paper logs. Wow. That's, I guess that's something that, thing, that drivers have, could look forward to. Have you ever noticed? That I mean, it happens. But have you ever noticed there ain't that many 
cattle trucks or cow haulers in wreck? Nah, nah.